Is it possible for an infinite God to create everything that exists within the space of a week? Is the creation account literal history, allegory, a polemic, mythical history, majestic prose, or something else? Who made everything that's in the material universe? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The first word in Hebrew is Bereshit. It's the Hebrew title of Genesis, meaning basically in the beginning. With God, there's no beginning, but with the material universe, there was. Even the science of atheists agrees that the material universe had a beginning. The second word in the Hebrew sentence is bara, and is usually translated as created. It's a word exclusively used to describe something new that only God can create. Elohim is the third word in the Hebrew sentence, usually translated as God. It's a unique word in that the ending I am, im, is Hebrew plural, yet it's used with a singular verb, known as a plural intensive. It can indicate plurality or greatness. It occurs 32 times in Genesis 1, making God a major theme of the chapter. Is this the mystery of God being one but plural, the first hint of the important Christian doctrine of the Trinity in Scripture? The next words in the Hebrew sentence are et ha shamayim va et ha aretz, usually translated as the heavens and the earth. This is the Hebrew equivalent of the universe. Was the Holy Spirit involved? The earth was unformed and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the surface of the water. There are a number of creation theories. Is Genesis literal history, allegory, or majestic prose? What are some forgotten purposes of the creation accounts? Let's look at some of the creation theories. First of all, there's godless evolution, then theistic evolution, then the day-age theory, the six-day theory, the gap theory, a polemic theory, Augustine's allegory theory, majestic prose, and intelligent design, among many others. Romans 1 makes a bold claim that not believing in God is a decision made independent of the facts by those who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And the motive is to excuse vile passions and a long list of human evils. It claims that the evidence for God is everywhere and obvious, but they did not like to retain God in their knowledge or science. What happened on day one? How long was that day? God said, let there be light, and so light appeared. God saw how good the light was. God separated the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. There was evening and there was morning, the first day. Does this contradict day four? Actually, it's not that simple. The word light here is a totally different word to the light of day four. Here it is or, meaning illumination, and in verses 14 to 16, it is the root meor, meaning a light source. Is this a lesson about God being the ultimate source of spiritual light, or is it a picture of a cloudy planet with the sun and moon only visible on day four? Does Revelation give us a possible clue? Never again will night appear, and no one who lives there will ever need a lamp or the sun. The Lord God will be their light, and they'll rule forever. The word day is clearly defined in this context by the words evening and morning. Some may argue that a day is like a thousand years, but isn't that a totally different context, speaking of God's patience? Dear friends, don't let this one thing escape you. With the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some understand delay, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Is the following a description of the atmosphere 
with its clouds. Then God said, let there be a canopy between bodies of water, separating bodies of water from bodies of water. So God made a canopy that separated the water beneath the canopy from the water above it. And that is what happened. God called the canopy sky. The twilight and the dawn were the second day. What happened on the third day? Was it good? A kind approximates a family, not a species. Is there any proof that one kind of plant has ever evolved into another completely different kind? Some scientists say yes, some say no. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. What happened on the fourth day? Was it also good? Then God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And they shall serve as signs and for seasons and for days and years. And they shall serve as lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He made the stars also. God placed them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to govern the day and the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, a fourth day. What happened on the fifth day? Was it also good? And God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living thing with which the water teems, and that moves about in it, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. What took place early on the sixth day? Was it good? Then God said, let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind. Livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground, and wild animals. And that's what happened. God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock, and small animals, each able to produce offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. What took place later that sixth day? Was it not just good, but very good? God said, let's make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the livestock and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God created man in his own image. In God's image, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God said, Behold, I've given you every herb yielding seed, which is on the surface of all the earth, and every tree which bears fruit yielding seed. It'll be your food to every animal of the earth and to every bird of the sky and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there's life. I've given every green herb for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. There was evening and there was morning, 
a sixth day. When God said, let us make mankind, who are the us? Some popular theories are that the us are one, God and the angels, two, that the word us adumbrates or indicates faintly the Trinity, or three, this is a leftover from earlier polytheistic accounts, which I personally doubt, or four, God used the royal plural. We can only speculate, but from a Christian point of view, a hint at the Trinity seems to be the likely explanation. Is it possible for an infinite God to create everything that exists within the space of a week? Is the creation account literal history, allegory, a polemic, mythical history, majestic prose, or something else? You decide. <music>